Fragments of the Past. The Last of the Past. Sunny Star Scout stood at the border of Hydra Heights as she looked at the map. Taking in a contented sigh, she took in the majesty of where she was and how she got there. It felt just like yesterday that she and her friends brought back unity to Earth Pony's Pegasi and Unicorns. Looking back at her friends, she smiled in remembrance as she remembered their grand adventure. Izzy came to Maritime Bay because of a drawing that she sent with her dad, Zip who wanted to find out about magic, and her sister Pip who reluctantly joined because of the situation that they were in, and Hitch who after some hesitation finally joined their ragtag group to bring magic back to the ponies. I'm not sure about this, Sonny. According to your dad's research, dragons are highly territorial, Hitch said, worried about his friends. Oh, come on, Hitch. It's not like we're hostile conquerors. We're just here because, according to Sunny, there should be remains of the past protectors of Equestria here. Izzy replied, chipper as always. Don't worry, Hitch. We'll be careful and alert. Sunny responded as she folded up her map and put it in her saddlebag. Venturing into Hydra Heights, the fog grew thicker, as the mountains higher as the group pressed on. A chill swept through them, as a gentle breeze howled as it passed through rocks and crevices. Sunny looked around, eager to see dragons of all shapes and sizes, but her optimism soon faded, as she saw that Hydra Heights seemed pretty much deserted. Pressing forward, they came to a spot that was supposed to house the remains of one of the Guardians. Alright, let's start digging! Sunny exclaimed as she laid out shovels and pickaxes. Examining where it was, Zip saw that it seemed treacherous. You sure this is the spot, Sunny? It looks highly unstable. Of course I'm sure, don't worry. We shouldn't be making that much movement. Sunny replied as she started digging. After a few minutes of digging, the mountain Sunny was digging under started to shake, as boulders started falling down. Trying to get out of the way, Sunny tripped and sprained her ankle. A boulder was on a collision course for her and her friends, and they screamed in terror, with little time to react. They closed their eyes, fearing for the inevitable. But instead of a crash, all they heard was a roar and an explosion, with a trickle of rock pieces hitting the ground. Opening their eyes, they saw that Sunny was okay. Surrounding her were fragments of rock as it singed from the intense heat that hit it. What are you five doing here? A monstrous voice roared out. The five ponies looked up to see a colossal purple dragon with green scales. Shaking a bit, Hitch speaks up. Please pardon our intrusion, but we were led to believe that we could find some remains of the past protectors of Equestria here. He informed the drake with fear in his voice. Turning down the volume of his voice, the dragon spoke again. Be that as it may, this place is still too dangerous. Leave now. He told them before turning to fly off. Wait! Sonny called out to him. The dragon turned to face her. I, I recognize you! Taking out her notebook, Sonny turned to a page with a description and drawing of a dragon. According to the description written in this journal, you must be Spike, right? Sonny asked. Hearing the name caused the drake's eyes to widen. He then came down to meet the pony's eyes and gently spoke. I am? And might I ask who you are, my little pony? Spike asked gently. Sunny looked deep into his emerald green eyes. They told a story of great sorrow and pain. She knew immediately that he was the last of his friends from the past. He'd seen all of his friends go, one after the other. His eyes told of the pain and sadness that he held in his heart. Finally answering, Sunny told him her name. My name is Sunny Star Scout. I've come in search of one of the remains of the past protectors. She said as Spike listened. Ah. <sighs> I see. Letting out a sigh, he looked down at the group. Follow me. I might be able to help. He said, as he started walking through the terrain. Following the dragon, the group walked past several remains of other dragons. Hitch, thinking it strange, leaned over to Sunny. I thought this was a nesting ground for some dragons, Hitch said. I did too. At least that's what I was led to believe. It says the dragons have been spotted here, migrating from near and far. Sunny responded, as she looked through her book. Overhearing the conversation, Spike responded. Indeed. Dragons migrate here, but not to live or nest. A grim silence quickly falls, as Spike stops to look at a skeleton of a dragon with gold armor on, and his claw rests a scepter with a red stone adorning the top. Spike closed his eyes and quietly said, I love you, Ember. I'll be seeing you soon. The ponies hung back in silence, letting Spike have his moment. After a couple of minutes of silence, Spike opened his eyes and turned to the ponies. As you can probably guess, this is where dragons come to die, Spike said. Hearing this caused Sonny's ear to droop a bit. So you're... Sonny began to ask before Spike nodded, knowing what she was going to ask. No, please, let's hurry. My time draws near, Spike said, as he led them into a cave, illuminated by torches of his fire. Inside the cave lay six display cases on wheels. 
Inside one that had an apple encrusted on the front was a brown Stetson hat with two red ribbons in front of it. Another display had a rainbow encrusted on it, and inside was a series of books titled Daring Do, and another display with a butterfly crest had a tea set. A display with a diamond crest housed a heart-shaped fire ruby. Another one with a balloon crest held a cannon of sorts, and a display with a six-pointed star crest housed a crown. These are some of the remains. Pinkie Pie's party cannon, a gift I gave Rarity, Applejack's hat and bows, Rainbow Dash's Daring Do books, Fluttershy's tea set, and Twilight's crown when she became ruler of Equestria. I've held on to them for many years, keeping them to remember my friends. I've kept them clean and free from dust. I brought them here so I could die with them in spirit, but I didn't think of what would happen after. Looking back at Sunny, Spike met her eyes. I'd like you and your friends to take them when I die and share their stories. I've seen the world forget, and it pains me. With these, you can help. Oh, and here. Spike took off one of his scales. Take this also, to complete the collection. Sunny smiled and placed a hoof on Spike's claw, followed by Hitch, Pip, Zip, and then Izzy. Sunny then spoke. We promise. We'll do our part, hoof to heart. The others repeated the phrase as Spike smiled. That's a nice saying. He said, as he withdrew his claw. Looking behind the five ponies, Spike saw his friends beckoning him to come over to the other side. Along with them, Ember stood, holding out her claw. Spike smiled, as his eyes closed one final time, leaving Sunny and her friends there in a cave with what they came for. And maybe, something more. Man, it hits you right where it hurts. Though it must be nice to know that at least Sunny and the others who do genuinely care about friendship and whatnot still want to preserve that. So it's a comforting thing to know before you pass. Now let's head on over to our sweet donators. Top donators Peter Coldhard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyrae, Chris, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hadge, Runescythe9852, Mad Men Stan, Leslie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Monster Norman, Stephen Bingham, Lion God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hud Zaza, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.